Alhamdulillah, we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has chosen Ramadan as the queen of all months and has blessed us with life and with iman and taqwa to fast its days and pray during its nights. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send his salat and his salam upon the one who said, whoever fasts Ramadan with iman and expecting the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall have all of his sins forgiven. My dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has reminded us in the Qur'an that the purpose of Ramadan, the purpose of Siyam, in fact the purpose of our religion is to achieve the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu kutiba alaykum al-siyamu kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. O you who believe fasting has been prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you so that you can achieve the consciousness and taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, in today's khutbah, I will talk about another goal of fasting, an alternative goal, which is directly intended by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is the goal of mastering the art of patience, of being patient, of sabr. The concept of sabr, is one that occurs constantly throughout the Quran and Sunnah. In fact, it is one of the most common commandments, almost 100 verses in the Quran mention the blessings of patience and command us to be patient. And this month has been linked to patience. Our Prophet Sallallahu said that the month of fasting is the month of sabr. Shahr al-sabr is one of the names of month of Ramadan. So one of the names of the month of Ramadan is Shahr al-Sabr, as according to the hadith in Sunan al-Nisa'i. And in another hadith, our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that as-sawmu nisf al-sabr, that fasting is mastering half of all of patience, reported in a tirmidhi So this month is the month of patience, and fasting is considered to be mastering half of the entire art of patience. And so as we begin this month, on the first Friday of this month, let us remind ourselves of the blessings and the beauty of patience and why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated it. As for the linking of sabr to this month, the linking of sabr to the concept of fasting, that is self-evident and obvious because it is during this month that we control ourselves. We are patient. We refrain from the two most essential items to live and that is food and water. In this month, we restrain ourselves from our sensual desires throughout the day. That which is permitted between spouses has become unlawful during the day. This is another mastery of patience. During this month, we restrain ourselves in so many of the sins that we are accustomed to do. In this month, we cut back our sins. We eliminate our sins. We restrain our desires to that which is lawful. And in this month, we restrain ourselves to the worship of Allah. Throughout the year, much of us, we waste too much time. In this month, every one of us with an ounce of Iman, we take advantage of our time. That which might be permitted, but it's too luxurious, too wasteful, we cut back on it. When we dedicate ourselves to the worship of Allah, to the recitation of the Quran, to the frequenting of the masajid. And so, the linking of sabr with this month is obvious. And the linking of sabr with the aspect of siyam is also obvious. Realize, my dear brothers and sisters, that being patient is a part and parcel of being a believer in Allah. And that is why all of the prophets of Allah, without exception, have stories in the Qur'an that embody patience. Without exception, every single prophet in the Qur'an has stories that deal with them mastering the art of patience. Of them is the Prophet Nuh alayhi salam, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that he was mocked and ridiculed by his people for 950 years. Of them is the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, who was patient time and time again. He was patient when he was thrown into the fire by his people. He was patient when he was commanded to sacrifice his son Ismail. He was patient over and over again. Of them is the patience of Musa, Moses. How many times Musa has to control his anger in the Quran? Even our Prophet وسلم, said, Musa was taunted and ridiculed more than I was, and he was patient. So even the Prophet وسلم, mentioned the sabr of Musa, the patience of Ayyub, the Prophet Job, Ayyub. How much was he tested and tried? 
His family, all of his children were taken away. All of his wealth was taken away. His skin was inflicted with leprosy. He became a pariah. And yet Allah mentions him in the Quran. وَذْكُرْ عَبَدَنَا أَيُّوبِ Remember our servant Ayyub. We tested him. إِنَّا وَجَدْنَاهُ صَابِرًا We found him to be a patient servant. نِعْمَ الْعَبْدُ إِنَّهُ أَوَّابُ نِعْمَ الْعَبْدُ What a great servant he was. Why did Allah praise Ayyub in such a manner? Because إِنَّا وَجَدْنَاهُ صَابِرًا We found him to be a patient prophet, a patient person. Our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, before him Ya'qub and Yusuf of course as well. The patience of Ya'qub losing Yusuf. The patience of Yusuf being tempted, being thrown in jail. Each and every Prophet in the Quran becomes a symbol of perfecting the art of patience. And of course our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as well mastered that aspect of this religion which is to be patient for the sake of Allah. How many stories, how many incidents of the seerah where we could see that our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa controlled himself, controlled his anger. He was patient for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The incident of Ta'if, the conquest of Mecca, the harsh Bedouins that he had to deal with each and every time again he continued to demonstrate what is the reality of mastering patience? And that is why, my dear brothers and sisters, sabr is linked with iman. If you have iman, you will have sabr. And if you don't have sabr, then in reality you have not perfected iman. Sabr and iman go hand in hand. You cannot have one without the other. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran literally dozens of verses. As I said, one of the most common commandments, one of the most frequent mentions in the Quran, over 100 times almost, Allah mentions patience. Some of those verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises true righteousness. He says in the Quran, in a verse we recited yesterday in our salah, لَيْسَ birra. It is not righteousness whether you turn east or west towards the qibla, but true righteousness is, and then a long list begins. One paragraph and Allah finishes this lift and those who are patient true righteousness is to demonstrate patience patience when you are afflicted with poverty when you're inflicted with calamity so when you don't have money or when you have some disease some sickness some loved one is in pain and during times of war. If you are patient in these times, these are the people that have demonstrated they are truthful. And they are the true righteous people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran that those who are patient, I shall give them glad tidings. Give them good news. Give them good news. Allah and the angels say to those who are patient, I am giving you good news. Who are those that are patient? الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ Whenever a calamity afflicts them, they don't lose hope. They don't become pessimistic. They remain optimistic. They have a cheerful attitude of Allah and of the Day of Judgment. And they say, to Allah we belong and to Him we shall return. So Allah says, وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ Give them good news. They shall be happy. They shall rejoice. Their pain, their suffering, their anguish will be turned into a time of joy on the Day of Judgment. وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ Give them the good news. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that it is through patience that one will be saved. One will be saved from the punishment of Allah. وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِنُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ To be patient. To master the art of patience. Tawasul bi sabr means you're advising one another to be patient. Not only are you patient, you tell your family, you tell your loved ones at times of calamity, we need to be patient during this difficult time. So you demonstrate patience in your own life. And you also become a role model for patience to your family and friends and relatives. These are the people that Allah says they will not be destroyed. Except for those who believe and do good and they follow the truth and they advise one another with patience. And that is why, my dear brothers and sisters, Allah loves those who are patient. Allah loves them and Allah is with them. In the Quran, there are only a handful of verses where Allah says, I love such and such. 
Some scholars have mentioned a dozen or, 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 or a little bit more than this. Just a few adjectives that Allah says, I love this category of people. Of those, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wallahu yuhibbu sabirin. Allah loves those who are patient. And Allah says that in Allah ma'as sabirin. Allah is with those who are patient. So Allah is with them when they feel they have nobody. When they feel everyone has been taken away, they've been betrayed. When they feel that their family has gone or they've lost a loved one, Allah says, I am with them. Inna Allah ma'as sabirin. Allah is with them. No Muslim should ever feel alone. No believer should ever feel abandoned because that person, that believer has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah has promised if you are patient, then I shall be with you. And that is why a patient believer, a patient believer is worth much more than a believer who does not have patience. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, in those famous verses of Surah Al-Anfal, that the people of Mecca, the people of Medina, the Muslims were complaining, we don't have enough numbers to fight the Quraysh. The Quraysh are too numerous. They are much more than us. What does Allah say in the Quran? إِن يَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ عِشْرُونَ صَابِرُونَ يَغْلِبُوا مِئَتَيْنَ if you have 20 people who are patient amongst you, notice Allah gave the adjective. If you have 20 who are patient, they shall overcome 200 of them. So one person that is patient is equal to 10 who don't have patience. So look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has praised the reality of patience in the Quran. As well, Allah links his forgiveness and paradise and the heights of paradise to being patient. Once again, I repeat, Allah links his forgiveness to patience. Allah says in the Quran, Those who are patient and do good, they will be the ones who are forgiven. So forgiveness from Allah is linked to patience. And enter Jannah and the highest ranks of Jannah are also linked to being patient. Allah says in the Quran that the people of Jannah, the people of Jannah, the Malaika Yalkhuluna alayhim in kulli bab. The angels are entering upon them from every single door. So imagine you are in Jannah, reclining on the couches of Jannah, seeing the beauty of Jannah, and the angels are coming to greet you. What are they saying? What is the phrase of the angels? Salamun alaykum bima sabartum. Peace be on you because you were patient. So the people of Jannah got into Jannah and are being honored by the angels. Why? Salamun alaykum bima sabartum. Peace be on you because you demonstrated patience. So the angels have linked your place in Jannah and your status in Jannah with the reality of you demonstrating patience in this world. And not just any place of Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the highest places of Jannah. They shall be given the highest ranks. The ghurfa in the Quran means the highest chambers of Jannah. Bima sabaru, Because they were patient. So patience gets you to the highest level of Jannah. And in fact, Allah Himself will congratulate you for having demonstrated patience. Quite literally in the Quran, Allah Himself will congratulate you. Allah says in the Quran, Inni jazaytuhumul yawma bima sabaru annahum humul faizun. Today, Allah speaking in the first person. And it is not common. Allah typically speaks in the third person. We shall do this or they shall be blessed. But in this verse, Allah speaks in the first person. He addresses us directly. <inaudible> Today, I shall give them all that they have earned because they were patient. So Allah Himself will take on the responsibility of rewarding those who were patient. And then Allah says, because they are the ones, أَنَّهُمْ هُمُ الْفَائِزُونَ They are the ones who have won the race. You know, in the Quran, there's this metaphor of racing to Jannah, of winning the race. Who are the real winners? Allah says, the ones who were patient, إِنَّهُمْ هُمُ الْفَائِزُونَ They're the ones who won the race in front of everybody else. And my dear brothers and sisters, the one who is patient has a guarantee from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah will help this person. When you feel all other avenues are cut off, when you feel alone, you must turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah has promised that the one who is patient, there is a guarantee Allah will take care of him. Allah says in the Quran, بَلَا إِن تَصْبِرُوا وَتَتَّقُوا وَيَأْتُوكُمْ مِنْ فَوْرِكُمْ هَذَا يُمْدِدْكُمْ رَبُّكُمْ بِخَمْسَةِ آلَافٍ مِنَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ Allah is mentioning the battle of Uhud 
and the battle of Badr as well, these verses occur in both of these battles, that if you are just patient, instead of being hasty, if you're just patient, and you have your trust in Allah, and taqwa in Allah, Allah will send down 5,000 angels to help you on that battle. And Allah links immediately patience with His aid. Bala in tasbiru. So once again, if on the battle of Badr, when you are facing Abu Lahab, you're facing Abu Jahl, you're facing the thousand army of Quraysh, and you're not even armed, and Allah says, if you're patient, I will send down 5,000 angels to help you, which is exactly what happened as we know. If that's going to happen on the battle of Badr, how about my and your trivial problems if we're patient in that? Cannot Allah solve those problems? How about my problems of finance, my problems of family, my problems of interactions, my problems of life? This is the reality of this world. We all go through our problems. And Allah Azza wa Jal has told us we need to go through all of these problems having mastered the art of patience. And that is why our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, no one has been given something that is better or more vast than patience. It is the best blessing to be given. Because again, patience and iman go hand in hand. You cannot be patient unless you have iman in Allah. And if you have iman in Allah, then that will also come with patience. And the ones who are patient shall be rewarded double for all they have done. For all they have done, they get a double, a bonus reward. Allah says, Those people will be rewarded double because they were patient. In fact, not just double. Not just double. The only time in the Quran that Allah mentions, I shall reward without measure, without counting. Forget double, forget triple, forget times 10, forget times 700, times infinity. The only time Allah says it is what? Is when it comes to patience. إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حساب. The ones who are patient, they shall be returned their reward without any measure or counting. Allah will not count how many times extra reward you are getting once you have mastered the art of patience. And my dear brothers and sisters, the rewards of patience, the blessings of patience go on and on and on. But the question arises, what is patience? And how is it demonstrated? What exactly is patience and how is it demonstrated? My dear brothers and sisters, realize that the reason why patience is so difficult to master is that patience is in reality inaction and inactivity. Patience is to do nothing, to master what you feel like doing. That is the reality of patience. It is easy to do something when you're irritated, when you're angry, when you're sad, when you're grieving. You feel like doing something. Patience tells you to master and not do that which Allah does not want you to do. So patience means you are feeling something inside, but it is not being shown on the outside. The grief, the anger, the anguish, the frustration, whatever it is, patience means you let it remain there and not show it on the outside. And that is why patience is so difficult, because patience is not an action. Patience is inaction. I repeat, patience is not an action. Patience is inaction. You don't do anything. Someone has died. Your loved one has passed away. You control your tongue. You do not wail, moan, grieve in a manner that is un-Islamic. You keep your tongue in check. You lose your job. Something bad happens. You do not start moaning and complaining. Why is this happening to me? I don't deserve this to happen. Astaghfirullah. Who are you to challenge the wisdom of Allah? Who are you to stand up and say, why is this happening? Are you Allah or are you a servant of Allah? If you are a true servant of Allah, then you say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Oh Allah, you are my Lord. I don't understand, but I trust you. I trust whatever has happened, has happened for the best. I don't understand, but that's because my wisdom is limited. I am not questioning your wisdom, O oh Allah. I am questioning my wisdom. And I trust you, O oh Allah. You will make things better for me. This is patience. Your attitude, your optimism, your iman, your words that you say, the actions that you do. We are prohibited in Islam from wailing and grieving, from beating ourselves when somebody dies. This is all haram. When somebody passes away, we demonstrate patience. When we lose a job, when any calamity happens, when we're in grief, we need to master ourselves and remember what our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِنَّمَا الصَّبْرُ عِنْدَ الصَّدْمَةِ الْأُولَى Memorize this hadith, brothers and sisters, because patience, according to this hadith, is demonstrated at the first stroke of calamity.
Patience is demonstrated at the first stroke of calamity. I.e., when you hear the news, how do you react? That is your patience. Everybody becomes patient in two years, in two months, in two days. Everybody becomes patient. You have to deal with it. True patience is demonstrated when? As soon as you find out the news. As soon as you hear that big disaster. What will be your reaction? إِنَّمَا الصَّبْرُ عِنْدَ الصَّدْمَةِ الْأُولَى Sabr is demonstrated at the stroke of calamity. And in order to prepare yourself for that stroke, you need to master patience. Patience is not learned after the calamity happens. Patience has to be earned before so that when the calamity strikes, you are able to control yourself in a patient manner. And hence, my dear brothers and sisters, we get back to the issue of fasting because fasting is what allows us to master our patience. Fasting is when we withhold ourselves from that which is necessary to live. Our food, our drink on this hot day, we are mastering that which is necessary in order to demonstrate to Allah if I can live without food and water, then I can live without committing sins. If I can live without food and water, then I can live without wailing and groaning and moaning. If I can live without food and water, then I can live without disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are mastering day by day, night by night, every single day. We're honing in and that is why just fasting will perfect half of patience. Of course, not all of it, because there are other things that need to be done as well. But just the act of fasting will get us 50% of the reality of patience. And my dear brothers and sisters, realize as well that patience is so beloved to Allah that of the names of Allah is the one who is patient. As-Sabur. Of the names of Allah is As-Sabur. So Allah characterized himself with that attribute that he loves so much. And how is Allah as sabur Our Prophet ﷺ gave just one example. Just one example. And of course this name is a whole khutbah in and of itself. He said, Allah, there is no one who is more asbar than Allah. No one has more sabr than Allah. His servants deny him, curse him, reject him. People negate Allah's existence. People say bad things about Allah. And yet he continues to provide for them their needs, their food, their drink, their merriment. SubhanAllah, if somebody says one half bad phrase about us, we abandon him for years. If we hear on the rumor grapevine that somebody has disparaged us, khalas, all good is cut off. Allah Azza wa Jal hears his servants saying such things about him, rejecting him, mocking him, denying him. And yet look, he is providing for all of them. That's one of the manifestations of his name, As-Sabur. That's one of the manifestations of Allah's sabr. And that is a divine characteristic that we are told to emulate as much as we can. That when something happens, we as well turn the other cheek. We as well demonstrate our patience. My dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, وَجَزَاهُمْ بِمَا صَبَرُوا جَنَّةً وَحَرِيرًا Their reward for having been patient was to enter Jannah and to... Taste all of the blessings of Jannah. So indeed, let us think about the reality of sabr as we go through this month. Let us master sabr one bit at a time. Let us appreciate that one of the goals of fasting is to master at least half of this beautiful concept of sabr. May Allah make us amongst those who are patient. Barakallahu wa barakum furqan al-azim. Wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bima fihim al-ayati wa dhikr al-hakim. Aqulu ma tasma'oon. Wa astaghfirullah al-azim ali wa lakum. Wa lisa al-muslimin ukul dhammin fa astaghfiruhu. Innahu huwa al-ghafuru al-rahim. الحمد لله الواحد الأحد الصمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد وبعد can ask the brothers to move forward there are people outside and we don't want to have anybody outside uh, today so squeeze in as much as you can scholars have mentioned that patience is of three types there are three types of patience my dear brothers and sisters the first type of patience which is the lowest level the lowest level is to demonstrate patience when a calamity afflicts you this is the lowest level because it's out of your control. You cannot dictate your circumstances. You lose a job, financial catastrophe, the death of a loved one. You cannot dictate it. So to demonstrate patience here means what? You control your tongue and you have an optimistic attitude with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't have to understand. You can feel sad. 
It's human nature to feel sad. You can cry, you can grieve, but you cannot question the wisdom or the mercy or the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You cannot question it in your heart, much less verbalize it in your tongue. So patience here means to control even your thoughts. Even your thoughts need to be controlled at a time of calamity, and especially your tongue. And you do not question the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the lowest level of patience. And it is one that indeed Allah azza wa jal mentions that this is one of those levels that whoever masters it has, and especially at the death of a loved one, our Prophet ﷺ mentioned that of the greatest calamities, and there are many hadith about this, is to lose a young one, a child, is to lose a child. And that is why losing a child and being patient is automatically linked to being entered into Jannah. There are many a hadith about the one who is patient at the death of a young one, at the child, and they demonstrate their patience. Allah Azza wa Jal will cause that child to hold on to his parents' hands and insist in front of Allah, no matter what his parents have done, they were patient at his death, insist that they will come into Jannah with his hands. So this is of that level, which is to demonstrate patience at the time of a calamity. The second level of patience is to be patient and restrain yourself from committing sins and disobeying Allah. Now this at times is more difficult because committing sins is in front of us. We have the luxury, the option of committing so many sins. Being patient here means controlling, withholding, with, with, with straining, holding ourselves back, reining ourselves in, checking ourselves in. We don't go and do something that is tempting in front of us. And this level of patience is one that the month of Ramadan helps us to master. Think about it. In Ramadan, we are withholding ourselves from food and water. We're withholding ourselves from the sensual pleasures. So we're learning to withhold ourselves from that which is not allowed for us. The only reason we don't eat and drink, Allah says don't eat and drink. So we don't. So then how about Allah says don't drink alcohol. Don't take drugs. Don't do this. Don't do that. The lists are there. So when we master withholding ourselves from food and water, we're also mastering withholding ourselves from the other sins. And the highest level of patience, which is really the most difficult, because it's so casual, because we don't even think about it, is to be patient, i.e. to restrain yourself away from time wasters and restrict yourself to that which is beneficial and the worship of Allah. To constantly be worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To be patient, i.e. withhold yourself, restrain yourself from that which is maybe even halal, maybe even permissible. But too much of permissible also becomes makruh. So to withhold yourself from too much of permissible things, too much of frivolity, too much of time wasters, and to be more beneficial, to do extra Qur'an, extra salah, extra dhikr, extra charity. And once again, the month of Ramadan teaches us this type of patience as well. Because all of us, we began doing a little bit extra. Some extra Qur'an, some extra charity. The month of Ramadan is the month of all types of ibadah. So we ingrain ourselves to be patient in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what Allah azza wa jal mentions in the Quran. وَأْمُرْ أَهْلَكَ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَاصْطَبِرْ عَلَيْهَا Command your family to pray and be patient as you command them to pray. Be patient. وَاصْطَبِرْ عَلَيْهَا That's the highest level to you, yourself, and your family constantly be worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being demonstrating patience in this regard. Brothers and sisters, remember as well that this whole life according to our religion, is a life of tests and trials. And therefore, every one of us will be tested and tried in different ways. But all of us are tested and tried. And the one major mechanism to overcome and pass those tests and trials is what? It is patience. And that is why Allah says, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَىٰ وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ Seek Allah's help when you face the calamities, when you have any problems. Seek Allah's help. Wasta'inu. Life is difficult. You need help. What help are you going to get? Allah mentions two things. Wasta'inu bi sabri was salah. Seek help through sabr, patience, and through salah, prayer. At times of difficulty, that's a separate topic. Inshallah, maybe another week of Ramadan, we'll talk about the salah. But our Prophet ﷺ, his mother, uh, his, uh, our mother Aisha said, our mother Aisha said, whenever our Prophet ﷺ was troubled with anything, 
Whenever something bothered him, what would he do? Fazi'a ila salah. He would rush to stand in salah. Salah would make him calm. Salah would make him conquer those problems, those fears, those frustrations. So patience and salah are the two things that Allah has told us to seek help in. And also realize, my dear brothers and sisters, that beautiful verse in the Quran that Allah tells us, Fasbir sabran jamila. Be patient, a beautiful patience. So patience is of levels. And the highest level is a beautiful patience. And a beautiful patience is one when people don't even realize you're being patient. Nobody knows other than Allah that you're being patient. That is the perfection of patience. Nobody can see you're frustrated. Nobody can see you're agitated. Nobody can see that you're feeling anger. You have mastered it so much that only Allah knows. And that is the perfection which Allah says, Fasbir sabran jamila. Perfect your patience until it is a perfect and beautiful patience. And the final hadith that I'll remind myself and all of you is that how does one achieve patience, my dear brothers and sisters? Well, there's no easy mechanism, fasting is one of them to perfect our fast, but the main mechanism of achieving patience is to want patience from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be eager to be patient to be greedy, to be blessed with patience and this we learn from the beautiful hadith of Sahih Bukhari and it's such a simple, such a profound hadith it's a hadith that I want us to memorize so that we are prepared for when a calamity strikes us وَمَنْ يَتَصَبَّرْ يُصَبِّرْهُ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ يَتَصَبَّرْ يُصَبِّرْهُ اللَّهِ Whoever desires to be patient, يَتَصَبَّرْ He actively wants to be patient. يُصَبِّرْهُ اللَّهِ Allah Azza wa Jal will give him the patience he requires. What a beautiful hadith. There is no magic trick. There is no mechanism other than wanting to be patient. وَمَنْ يَتَصَبَّرْ when the calamity happens, you realize, you know what? I need to be patient. Oh Allah, help me to be patient. وَمَنْ يَتَصَبَّرْ Whoever wants that sabr, يُصَبِّرْهُ Allah. Allah will give him that sabr that he or she needs and requires. It's that simple, my dear brothers and sisters. You want to be patient? Then demonstrate to Allah, show to Allah, have that desire. And guess what? Allah has promised. You want that patience, you will get it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, وَلِرَبِّكَ فَاصْبِرْ if you are patient for your Lord, وَلِرَبِّكَ فَاصْبِرْ Then you will get it. And this is, by the way, of the first commandments that was given directly to our Prophet and by Allah. Of the first commandments. Surah Al-Muddathir. The first commandments that came down. Ya ayyuhal muddathir of the first commandments Allah tells our prophet وَلِرَبِّكَ فَاصْبِرْ Directly to him, singular. Allah is speaking directly to him. Be patient for the sake of your Lord for the rest of your life ahead. This is the advice I give myself and all of you. We need to make sure and realize that patience comes from Allah as sabur You want to have sabr? Believe in as sabur Make dua to as sabur Ask Allah for that patience and realize that Allah Azza wa Jal loves you and cares about you even more than your mother as our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. Whatever happens, happens for our best even if we don't understand it. And in this month of sabr, in this month of Ramadan, in this month of patience, let us try to master this beautiful concept because in reality, Iman and Sabr are linked together. The one that has Iman has Sabr, the one that has no Sabr has not perfected Iman. Allahumma inni da'in fa aminu. Allahumma la tada'na fi hadhi yawmi dhamman illa ghafarta, wala hamman illa farrajta, wala daynan illa qadayta, wala maridan illa shafayta, wala asiran illa yassarta. Allahumma gfil lana wa li ikhwanin alina sabakuna bil Iman, wala taj'a fi qulubina ghillan للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم من أرادنا أو أراد الإسلام والمسلمين بسوء فاشغله بنفسه واجعل تدبيره في تدبيره يا قوي يا عزيز عباد الله إن الله تعالى أمركم بأمر بدأ به بنفسه وثنى بملائكة قدسه وثلث بكم أيها المؤمنون من جنه وإنسه فقال عز من قائل عليما إن الله وملائكة يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وأنعم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين عباد الله إن الله تعالى يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه يزد لكم ولذكر الله تعالى أكبر وأقم الصلاة